Welcome to Film Study, an all-American podcast with Lexi on Lexi. And today, it's like part... Five. 347. <laughs> Us for Livia's communication. There's been so many, so many episodes dedicated to this. And we're talking about it again because we... Uh, because they ended on an interesting note in season four, the season four finale. Uh, so yeah, Carmen, Manda, my guest co-host, y'all know what's up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all of those things. Uh, comment, let us know your thoughts on the episode. Anyway, let's hop into it because we got a lot to cover. Right. Uh, I want to start off with this question before we get into their communication. Wow. I know you're not prepared. I know you're not prepared, but I'm going to start off with it anyway. I wanted And I know I'm going to have to answer it first because Twin is not going to do it. So go ahead. Yeah. I'm glad you know. If we could do a pro and cons list, because I want to start off very balanced to show that we have balanced views. We could do a pro and cons list. Top three on the pro end for Olivia. Top three on the con end for Olivia. Top three on the pro end for Spencer, top three on the con end for Spencer, what would your list look like? When you say pro and con of what? Their communication? What are we talking about here? I think their their communication, but also like who, what that says about them in general as a character. So yes, it's related to their communication. Oh, so and it's based character. in their communication, but them as a character. Okay, but I think it has character. to relate to how they how they communicate. Wow. Right. This is a this is a question you just thought not to give us ahead of time? Yes. Yeah, I, I <laughs> thought about this. I literally thought and I didn't want to give y'all too much time to think about she it. She's giving us time. <laughs> what? what? That means you got to think. Dude. So I'm gonna go first. No, but here's the thing though. I have thought about this question. I have not thought about my answers to this question either. So I will go first and I truly don't have my answers in my back mm-hmm. pocket. Like okay. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thinking right now mm-hmm. as I stall. Mm-hmm. I'm being so serious. I'm yeah. thinking right now, as I saw, if I, uh, let me go Spencer first. Okay. I'm going to start out with the pros okay. and say that he, uh, he really tries to be supportive. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, I, I always support you. Like, he really tries to be supportive. Let me leave it there. Two, um, he tends to address things in the moment. Okay. Three, uh, he, he, uh, what's the third one about his communication? He, I'm going to say he listens to people who have been through it okay. in terms of Billy, in terms of his mom. So that's my pros for Spencer. Let's just go down in a list. So pros for Spencer, Monda. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to start with cause for Spencer. That's okay. Um, pros for Spencer. Um, he, he has what I call like a listening ear. So, mm-hmm. and, and that's relatable to, it's going to also relate to my cons part, but it's relatable to the fact that he values, like you said, people's experiences, but he also values like what they're saying. Um, I will also say that he, he <laughs> listens, tries to listen with love. And I say that is because the people that he, um, pay attention to and listen to are the ones that he loved the most and he'll and he'll he'll sit in that with them for that and which is which is very helpful um when when listening to people is that you do it with care and love um and then i would say that he um when it comes to his communication he also tries to help the other person see a different perspective, which is always helpful. You sometimes have to see the counter um, argument yeah, into true. it. And that's very helpful. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I, I appreciate that about Spencer. And yes, audience, I just said I appreciate Spencer. And I appreciate that about <laughs> Spencer. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm actually glad that we actually started off with pros for Spencer. Yes. Um, what about you, Carmen? Okay, before I answer the question, I just want to point out the fact that we perfectly pointed out how I, Carmen, has the worst memory. Um, <laughs> out of three of us, right? <laughs> and then... But this is about, about him as a character. You shouldn't have to know specific Wait, things wait, wait. Done. I don't... I don't know about anybody else um, who, you know, is, you know, part of the podcast that has been a part of the podcast, but I'm one that tell Lexi, like, send me questions and like post the questions so I can see them. So I know if the answer, right? <laughs> Why? Because I'm not. <laughs> because some questions I think they were deeply about, and this is definitely one of them, but I'm going to go for it. Okay. Go for it, Twin. You got um, this. Just go for yes, it. You got it. You got this. Um, he loves hard, right? So, and when I say he loves hard, I mean like he's going to go hard for the people that he loves. Um, it's not always in the healthiest way, but he just loves hard. Um, to I agree with the listener. He's a great listener. Um. He always wants to help and, um, you know, like, he wants to help solve the problems of the people here around, which I guess still ties to he loves hard. Um, yeah. Was that three? Yeah. No. If, if you say solve, <laughs> the solve is that person. <laughs> if you say solve. All right, because we got to <laughs> move along a little bit. All right, uh, mm-hmm. let's do pros for Olivia now. Um my pros for Olivia in terms of her communication. Uh, I'm going to say, even though sometimes it doesn't come out in the best way, she, she tr- like tries to explain exactly what she's feeling, not to be confused with what I said for Spencer. And he'll say it like typically like in the moment, but she cares so much about explaining exactly what she's feeling. Uh, that sometimes it doesn't even come out in the right way, but she'll she'll just try it. Uh, I appreciate that about her. Another thing that is a pro on her end is, you know, yeah, I it, it's related, but I tr- genuinely do think that she she speaks her mind, uh, and she'll say exactly what she means. Um, I think that's related to number one about like the care that she takes. Uh, and then number three is that she's a really good listener. I think she's a really good listener as well. So yeah, those are my pros for Olivia. <clears throat> you ready for me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so for Liv, my number one is that she speaks her mind. She That girl will not hold her tongue if she don't have to. And I love it about her. Uh which can also be a problem, but I love it. I love that she has that that part of her because she's been always trying to find who she is. One thing she knows, like, I will tell you how I feel. Um, two is that um, she also, she loves hard, which can sometimes get in the way of how she resolves conflict um, because she also leans into trying to do what's best for the other person than herself, but she loves hard and the communication. Here's one thing that she does that I love, and I'm a conflict resolution person, and I love it. She knows when to walk away from an argument when it's about to like go downhill and explode. And that's and some people call that immaturity, and actually that's called let me re, re, reposition myself because this right here is not going to work. It's not going to end well, so I'm going to walk away. She'll walk away in the middle of someone talking. This is not going to end well. And sometimes you need those people who just be like, pause it's the reason why i get paid i'd be like pause this conversation this is not going anywhere um and so i appreciate that about her and i also find it funny because some people are like oh i'm about to, she's about to stay in this with me and she's like no not right now this is not gonna end well in a way and for her to see that and her intuition of seeing that is very helpful so those are the three all right um round us out okay who we'll live um, I love that she she's not apologizing who she is. Um, she may be, you know, she may be apologize for 
if someone got affected by a choice she made, but she's not apologizing for her decisions to do whatever she did say or say whatever she yeah. did. She's unapologetically her and she's about that life. I'm sorry. Go yes. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, two, which I guess I can, you know, add this over to Spencer, just in case I didn't give three. I can supposed to be, they're funny. They're, they're funny. Like, oh, that's a good one. Dang a good it. One. I wish I, yeah, yeah, they're funny. Um, and for three, um, what else can I give three? She's a, she, you know, she, she loves, she loves hard. Um, you know, she, if I, you know, if I, you need anyone to like really support you or just, you know, be there for you, you know, that's live. She got you. That's great. That I absolutely good. love that. And you know what? I'm I'm throwing another curveball. I said top three cons, but this is taking longer than I thought. So we're just going to do the top one. The top one, one con, uh, if you could fix anything about how they communicate, what would it be? For Spencer, it's... Um, for me, for Spencer, it's his ability to take the perspective of another person. I don't think that he does that well. And sometimes I think that he uh, he tries. And so in a way, I think that he thinks he does. Uh, but I think that he's he really struggles taking the perspective of, of another person. What about you, Amanda? I agree with you on that. The kind I have is him trying to talk it out right then and there. Not everyone's ready to have that conversation right then and there. Mm. And emotions yeah. are high. He'll when, be like, I don't care. I'm, I'm, we talking about it. Yeah, talking about you. <laughs> when actually you, agree. Need take, you need to take a pause. You need to breathe for a oh, second. Oh, oh, you got people downstairs? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You got an article to write? I don't care. It's due in, in a couple hours. Let's talk about this now. Like, sir, We no. get into it. We get into it. We get into it. Right. <laughs> And so sometimes you, sometimes you do have to like pause for a second. You do have to breathe. You have to gather your thoughts. And while some people are like, no, we have to talk it out. We have to talk it out. But emotions run so high in that moment, particularly with Spencer. Spencer and has some very high emotions. And he's like, we just need you to like pause. I need, I want him to like bring in that meditation, that Zen that JJ is trying to teach him when he's communicating with people. He thinks he just needs to do it outside of like football and everything. He also needs to do it when he's speaking with people. Like, got you. Move, move with the current <laughs> for a second. <laughs> so yeah, Carmen. Okay, so since you guys said um, the other two, mine will be um, for him to say exactly what he's trying to say. Like, cause sometimes I feel like he sugarcoat things. Mm-hmm. And the only time he don't sugarcoat is when he, it comes out in anger. Correct. You're right about so that. So it's like he know how to say what's really the problem or whatever he feels the problem when he's angry. But other than that, he's trying to find a way to say it that may be just more, you know, like sugarcoated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to be able to find a way to have tact without having the to balance. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, for me on Liv, if there's one thing that I could change about her communication style, um, I feel like it's 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 unexpected. But I do think I think this is her uh, her big one, right, is that she because she takes such care to say exactly what she means. Say it. Um she can fall into like one of two traps. She either like holds on to things Mm -hmm. for so long because she doesn't know how to talk about it. And then because she doesn't know how to talk about it, it comes out super, super vague sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, And so like that combination, I feel like is where most of her communication issues lie is that she like holds on to things it, uh, sometimes and then that like when she holds on to things it comes out super vague because she doesn't know exactly how to communicate it so she'll like she'll err she'll err on like I don't know how to communicate this thing so I'm not gonna say it because I don't know exactly how I want to say it mm-hmm. instead of like yeah 
letting it out. Uh, but yeah, that's me for Liv. For me for Liv is that because she cares so much, she will sometimes hold herself back from certain people and and, and hold her, her thoughts and her truths back, particularly with Spencer, instead of just saying, this is how I'm feeling and not wanting to hurt the relationship um and and things of that nature so she 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 will like she will lose her voice and lose um who she is which leads to the end how the ending happened while some people didn't understand it (laughs) i did um (laughs) yeah yeah we both did we both both did did. we both called it that's the that's the funny part that's how we did um and so and and i want her to continue to find her voice and how she communicates um with people. And that's because too, as she's always said, I've been tethered to someone. I've been a twin. I've been all these different people. Um, and she's steady trying to find herself and find her voice and how she communicates. So. All right, Carmen. Okay. So the answer I have for this, I actually like, um, realized it to date, um, about Liv is that one of her downfalls, um, is, she tends to, like, how can I explain this? Before anything happens, she has a version of how she thinks things are going to play out. So oh, yes. Things, yes. Oh, my gosh. Way. Say it again. <laughs> yes. So it's yes. like, she don't even, the way she processed things, like, she's processed, like, she already had processed that someone's going to say this, or it's going to go like this, or, like, you yes. know, for example, even, like, the whole, if they find out that she relapsed, she was going to get stumped back, like, she has already got to what, how she thinks. Been she through X, Y, Z, and this she, will happen on letter Z, and Y, yes. and this is the and outcome. <laughs> at some points, and we used to say this, Carmen, when we were in that other community, sometimes Liv is playing chess while other people are playing checkers. And she's like trying to move the pieces around. Yeah, but sometimes her pieces they're not they're not actual. <laughs> you you played a different game, boo boo. Yeah, no, so she, exactly. you played a different game, boo boo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and she and she and sometimes her chess. I'm like, you on a different chessboard, baby. I need you to come back. <laughs> you are on a different chessboard. Uh, but no. she is and always is- playing chess though, and that's because she's always trying to find a way where she fits in with people. And that's been her whole life, where she fits in. I think she just, I think she based, like, based off her experiences, right? Which is what right. we normally does. She tried to figure yeah. out how she, she already knows it's going to go based off experiences. But it's like, okay, Liv, you can't give people a chance to grow or you can't give people or situations that, like, you can't grow this way if everything you, you already basing it off something that happened through in the past. Yeah, but I will say this. I will say this. If she kept getting those same experiences thrown back at her, until someone show you something different, it's hard for people to break that habit. But how? But some people don't even know that she sees them that way. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's true. and I think we're gonna get into further into that as well, yes. specifically with Spencer, not necessarily with other people. But yeah. I do think it's important to uh, because they have specifically around this issue of the article and specifically around their lack of communication which i think that we all saw it we We, when i the first yeah the first Mm -hmm. uh little exercise that we did on this 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 podcast this series was if we could give a thumbs up thumbs down and thumbs in the middle (laughs) and even though we were just like it's been like it's been moving it's been like a little gauge right at the end of the last episode we were like it's kind of spiraling down right. <laughs> it's kind of spiraling back down right. and, I had yeah. it, and I didn't even get I told y'all it didn't move that much for me I said y'all it's not moving that much I'm telling y'all yeah, no, no, no. I, said, I, said, I said I said I said it was I think I said in the middle in the beginning of this season yeah you were stopping season four yeah I was well it, that was when we started out and then I said like when it was hit like let's say like episode three, like those early episodes that it was really starting to move up, not all the way up, but it was up. And then as we got back to, by the time we did another podcast, I was like, it's it's, it's back down, it's back down. But that's how communication goes with couples and relationships. But for some reason, people don't understand that. And they're not understanding that through the lens of Spolivia. They're like, oh my gosh, it's perfect communication. I'm like, no, they don't. They really don't. They do mm-hmm. not have perfect communication. They I don't think nobody have perfect communication. No one does. Exactly. No exactly. one does. Fictional or um, real. <laughs> yes. Right, right. 
some things. So I, I love that we did the whole pro and con thing. I think that was a good intro to it, especially leaving where we left off in our last podcast. I'm just gonna, we know that there is, you know, there is a thing, Liv's starting to be a journalist. Um, one thing that I did want to know, there's a couple of highlights I want to hit. Uh, Spencer saying, you'll be better than I am on the football field. Um, uh, him also realizing in terms of football, like for the first time in his life, he's not the best on the team. Um, and just them really starting to, especially as we get around to 14, journalism and football for them both being like pulling them in opposite directions, mm -hmm. as they so frequently said. Um, and other people in their life. So Grace is just like, okay, what do you think about this? Uh, well, at, at the time, it was the brand deal, Spencer. And he really had to come to a, a spot where he was just like, okay, I don't need to... Uh, I don't need to talk about what Liv thinks or what Davida thinks. I need to think about what I think about my brand. Uh, and, you know, I need to be confident in whatever it is I'm doing. So we left off on them sort of in a rough spot because of this brand deal. And I think the, the branding <laughs> sort of offshooted into the article. Yeah. It so it, their problem didn't start with the article. The problem started when they were talking about Spencer and his brand and whether or not he is, in Liv's words, whether or not he's sort of starting to forget who he is. Yeah. Uh, because well, Some people brand. like to think it's the article, but yeah. Yeah, that's where it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just catching us up to 15. Liv has started the article um and or she's thinking about starting this article and uh it, it's sort of evolving it's evolving from this piece about uh this piece about nil in general and it's she's doing what she calls looking for a face mm -hmm. of nil so so to attack it because crystal didn't want it to be just another nil article so she was looking at to, it to attack it from another angle um, and as she's thinking about how to attack it from another angle, I forgot this happened. She, she asked Spencer, she was like, hey, yeah. you want to be the face? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, you want me to be a face of a hit piece, an NIL hit piece when I'm trying to get endorsements? Yeah, pretty much. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And so he was just like, yeah, I will not. I will not be doing that. Yeah, and it's you. Yeah, go ahead. No, that's when they they had this conversation about why was she really interested in nil, and then also like right her her perspective and his perspective because he's like it's a few hundred dollars, which means a lot for my community, and she says, and and then they talk about their differences, their class, the class differences, which by the way, the two of them have never spoke about on no. our screen. They have not prior to this conversation. They've never spoke about. Liv being in Beverly Hills and her privilege and things of that nature and his his experience of how this like money and getting like a few hundred dollars mean more to, to them because she's never lived his experience. They This is the first time they had it and which starts an argument because their differences are starting to pull them apart in understanding of who they are. So yeah. Right. But the argument and the, ar the argument ended up turning to be a, a good one. Because yeah, it did. It very much did. It did. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, I agree. It made her realize that she was really going at the article in one, you know, for one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and this is actually what I was gonna say too. Uh, it, it, I didn't realize this parallel at the time, but you know, Spencer mentions Davida as an option uh, yeah. for another perspective. She's like, I don't need another perspective. He's like, All right, forget I asked. Whatever. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. mention it again. And then later, that's when Liv is like asking him, Oh. Phew, she want to be the face <laughs> and those are my words and he's like nah and she's like all right forget i forget i asked so you can see the little the little crumbs that they're dropping here that it's mm -hmm. just like oh so instead of like talking about this and why this is making them uncomfortable they're just like ah just forget about it just forget about it um and it was they had that whole conversation because he's just like it started to feel personal yeah. um and you know uh the the that uh, she's like, no, this is like the NIL is a seismic shift in whatever, like sports, the world, the sports world, whatever. Um, and he's, he's like, yeah, but you didn't live, right? Mm -hmm. The couple hundred, you didn't live 
just to buy this for a couple hundred yeah. bucks. Um, and she was just like, I guess I didn't know that, <laughs> that invalidated my perspective. <laughs> She's so funny. <laughs> But she was so real, though, because he she was. Yeah, they, that, that that's actually a moment where they're actually un, really honest with each other. In that yeah, moment, yeah. they really spoke their honest, their honest truth. And his was like, "You judging a, you know, you judge a point of view you didn't live." And hers was like, "Okay, so because I didn't live it, I can't, you know, have a opinion on it." And, Speak and, to it. And you said something very poignant, um, Carmen. I think that you said that when Spencer tells the truth, um, he tells it through anger. Mm-hmm. And so in that moment, he was angry and he wasn't like yelling angry, but that's when he came out because he was like, oh, I didn't mean it like that because he how he said it. Because and then you see how quick he tries. Yeah, it's like he takes it back. He, like, oh, he, back he, he loves, he, and here's the thing. People think, that, or let me say this. I have seen people say that he is like, this is just reserved for, for live. I don't think that's true. It's I not true. I saw this exact- same conversation with Layla in season one, mm-hmm. where he was just like, "What was? Oh, you can't understand." And this it was about Crenshaw and and the championship, and mm-hmm. she was just like, "You don't need to have the weight of the world." And he was like, "You don't understand. You're not from there." Right. And she was just like, "Hey yo, hey, yo. <laughs> He just did it in a very. He wasn't yelling at this time, but he was still coming from a sense of anger because he had to right. take it back and says, "I apologize. I didn't mean it." Way she's like, "Yeah, yeah, you did." You meant it. Yeah, you did. You did. Um, and so she, but she does take that to heart and she goes to talk to Billy about it. Uh, and he, you know, he encourages her. I There's a couple of lines that I just think are so, so important too. Me too. Uh, I was proud of Billy. This is, this is the first time, I didn't realize that it was all the way back here in episode 15, that she was like, hmm, maybe I should not do this article. Right. It was that. So she tells that to Billy. And he says, after talking about it and seeing that she does need to take it from a different perspective, but this is what Billy tells her, and this essentially keeps her going with this article. If you think you have a story, (laughs) you have to follow your instincts. Say it one more time, Lexi. If you think that you have a story, you got to follow your instincts. And this is going to be a theme. Thank you. Of Liv wanting to give up this article, and people, I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline exactly who was saying it to her too. Uh, but people telling Liv, specific people in her life, telling Liv, don't drop this just because you're going through a hard time, right? Because Follow she did recognize way back in episode 15, maybe this is just too much, and maybe I'm just like. You know, I, maybe I should give up this this nil article. So anyway, she talks to Davida. They have that conversation about power, and I think that gives her a really great perspective mm-hmm. because she wasn't talking; she was talking about inequities, but she hadn't touched like power at putting the power into the players' hands to make their own decisions. And that is when it changed for her about just being about maybe it was about just nil and how it's like focusing too much on the NIL. And I, to be honest, and I said this in the last podcast, I was just like, I do think it was a little bit about Spencer at the time. Yeah, it was. And then it was it, Spencer it, questioned it. In the house, it was about a little bit about him. At the time, yeah. Right. It was about right. him. And, but it, it quickly evolved into this thing that was just like, no, now it's about inequities. And then now it's about, oh, like, there's these top players that have power and, like, there's these other players that, that all that that are now just now getting a sense of that power and like what are the decisions they're going to make with them? Yeah, I will give that. I will give I will give both Davida and Billy that credit to help her yeah. see that very much Same. so because Billy gave her that story about his friend um, having to take a trip to go home for a funeral, right? And how he, right, and then, then he got yeah yeah then it's ineligible. ineligible yeah. So yeah, yeah. I just missed a no credit, but okay. not at this moment, not at this particular moment. I, well, I will, I will give Spencer credit for suggesting. Yes, yeah, at least give him the suggestion. Yeah, I gave, we gave him the credit. I, uh, we gave him the I credit. Just, we gave him the credit. Perspective, but oh, I'm not. I was talking to you, Lex. I was talking to Bunda because uh, he uh, always <laughs> trying to make me give Spencer some credit. <laughs> I gave Spencer credit when he was like giving her a different, ex- like a different perspective. But at these mm-hmm. two, it was because she was ready to drop it. But the conversation between Billy and Davida actually like truly shifted it 
she shifted her angle for the story. Yeah. Do you think? Um, do you think like her wanting to drop it like had because she, she was unsure if she really wanted to write it for why she say she was, or she also was questioning what everybody was you know asking her like you sure? Because you remember even the girls asked her like you know you sure this? I think I, well, I think it was a little bit of both. Like, yeah, I do think both. that she was finally starting to recognize and her I think her assumption was correct <laughs> that it was about that it was about Spencer but I think that was uh at first at first yeah uh, at, that's what I'm saying at first because even um during the snap break she asks Spencer like do you not want me to write it I know you don't like my take on it you know what yeah. I'm saying and then he's like you know I don't have to like it for you to for me to want you to win yeah. And, and so it's can like, we talk about that actually? Can we talk about that uh, one real quick? Oh, okay, real ahead. quick. Because you know, here's something that I was very intentional about is finding spaces where Spencer talked about her career because a line of thought that I have, and I still think it's true. I think it's a little, it's a little more balanced than I originally thought, but I still think this line of thought is true. Is that? Overall, on screen, we have seen that Spencer does not take her career as a journalist as seriously as Liv takes Spencer's career as a D1. And I agree. I totally agree. I agree. I agree. Um, Not as serious as he should. Yep. Yeah, not as serious as and, he should. And, for audiences, uh, and that's not to say he doesn't support her at yeah. all because we have these things where he's just like, one of the first things he says, right, at that snack break, ain't half the articles on the homepage, your pitches. Yes. So he knows a couple, he knows a bit about it, right? Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And if you notice, she literally is just like, they talk about the article for a little bit and she's like, oh, you don't want me to write this. He doesn't respond. <laughs> he doesn't respond because he really he doesn't does. want her to write it. Because he, he really read. does not want her to write it. He doesn't want her to write it. Wait, 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 wait. In what? In, in, in 415? Yeah, when they're on the bench when she says, you don't want me to write this article. I know she you don't want me to write it. And he doesn't respond. He does respond. He responds and pretty much says, I don't have to like. Oh, that was after the pause, though. That was after. That yeah, was after. Yeah, that was after pause. Oh, my God. He can't pause, y'all? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Because it was after she continued to talk and she was just like and that's when she said i know that you're not really a big fan of my perspective and right. that's when he steps in but the original question is oh you don't you don't he, did, he doesn't it. want her to write it and there's, there's crumbs of him to, like talking about how he doesn't want her to write it throughout different yeah episodes. which is i mean which is understandable why he don't want her to write it it's understandable it is understandable, it's understandable but i think but that's to to our point is right. that he doesn't know how to he doesn't really communicate that. And it only comes out when he's sort of, commu- to your point, it only comes out when he's communicating mm-hmm. in anger. Right. Uh-huh. And we, Agree. And then, so there's going to be people like, he's always supported her in her writing. If y'all go back, I think it's 4-9 is when she comes back from journalism, the Journalism Institute. That's when it started. You've seen that. Don't talk about I know, that I'm going to just briefly. I just want the audience to start going there and looking through that perspective lens. For mm-hmm. those who are like gonna, because there's gonna be people who object as soon as they hear us say that he doesn't take it seriously. Go from that lens and then and then keep looking through um, this Bolivia um, pathway. But go ahead. Right. He right. supports her. He just, he yeah. just not, yeah, he just, it's not, it's just yeah. not the level that she supports him, right? Particularly. But you want, but, but if I can, you know, throw a little something in there, I think the difference is, right? I'm not saying, not 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 there giving you go Carmen go ahead wait not giving it's really it's really not meant to give Spencer a pass anything right so it's like um for example Liv did not become a fan of football when she started dating Spencer right Liv became a fan of football when she was a baby that's what yeah. so what I'm this so no this is what I'm saying so her interest in football is purely an interest in football outside of Spencer correct. So when it comes to her supporting him and understanding him and interested in what he's doing in football, that's the interest that's already been there. Um, for Spencer, well, can I wait, push back? Wait, can I push? Wait, better finish wait, first, Lexi. Wait, wait I go for but, so, okay, but I don't want to so, forget the point. Is why okay, but that. you just can't cut me off because you don't want to forget. Oh, yes, yeah, go, Carmen, go, Carmen. <laughs> Jeez, Okay, go. and so for Spencer, right? So like we said in the beginning, right? We see where he's. It's a joke. Right? It's like, okay, bruh, what is you doing? Like, she's asked you not to call it that. 
It's a joke. But over the season, we see we don't really see him joke with it about no more. And we see little by little, not a hundred percent, not a lot, but we see little by little of him becoming more supportive of her in her writing. So I think that that's what is the big difference. More is that yeah, you, I, what I mean by more su- for support or more from the very first time where we really see him talk to her about her stuff when he's making jokes versus by the end of the I season. I think that we've seen him go up and down. Thank if you. I'm being I concur. Okay. I don't so, think that okay. He okay, so if you want to say more supportive over time. Yeah. Okay, so you want to say okay, so up and down. But still it's also it's sort of the interest he never had that he now has to take on because it's something that his girlfriend loves so for him it's more of a learning and actually like putting the effort versus for Liv this come natural but and here's because I think this point is going to come back up when we mention what Grace says to Spencer about Spencer knowing his dreams since he was a kid and Mm -hmm. Liv figuring out her dreams right now we're going to come I'm going to push pause on that um but I want to address uh uh you saying that that uh, she's she's always just had a general interest in football. That's true, but I wanna I wanna draw a little a little uh, comparison to how she was with Asher. I knew you was right? gonna do this. Asher <laughs> was super into football, so much so that he took steroids, uh, and that whole evolution of him trying to and even before he took steroids all the way back in season one of him trying to get back on the team of him you know of him trying to prove himself on the team and throughout season two even though she was supporting him throughout that time her main focus was not like how can I be good for him in terms of football like it is with Spencer um, I'll, so Asher but, is more how can I get his life back right? Because he yeah, but it was how it was how can I get his life back? How can I help him with his his mom and his dad? Yeah, yeah. it wasn't about it wasn't about like. But she oh, also so how did you Asher, do with the game? But she also wasn't Asher's girlfriend at the time. But even after she was his girlfriend, she wasn't really she didn't really show an interest in his life in terms of him as a football player because she didn't. It's, I will say him. this. It's also because okay, but the, but what I'm saying is it's not just it's not just because no, I she mean, has like, a general interest. But you were saying it's because she has a general interest. It's well, also I was just, saying that it comes easier for her to be in his interest because she already has the knowledge to understand. She has the, the foundation. Love for it. Yes, that's what I was saying. Not like like okay, she's it's if it wasn't even Spencer, she was no, not like that. I'm saying she already has a foundation of football. She already has the the ins and outs of football. Hey, even outside of um Spencer, her her article is on football. So her her life what, what, it's football. Yeah, and what's interesting because she's you, a you coach have, daughter. Yeah, Go she, ahead. you, you have fans who are like. Can she find something else to write about? Can she do something else to write about? Here's one thing, and I say this if you follow me on Twitter, and I, for the people who who I've taught on how to write, I always say write about what you love. Write about what mm-hmm. you know and write about what mm-hmm. your, your community. Football is Liv's community. Liv was born yeah. into football. Right? It's she just was around born. it. It was, she was raised up in it. It is her life. It is, if she's not dating Spencer tomorrow, it's still going to be her life. Mm-hmm. And so... And also, people fail to realize Spencer's not the only one on that team. Even though it's through the lens of her relationship yeah. with Spencer, Jordan's on that team, mm-hmm. and Jordan is interacting with those people. And I always say this, and me and Kendra said this last week. I'm gonna say, listen, there's one person in the world who live will end someone's life for. That'll be for Jordan Baker, point blank and done. She may call him doofuses and everything else she may do to him, but that that boy right there, she loves to death. And so, literally, even if you're not seeing it, an undercurrent is always her brother in there because that's that's her. They they're te- they're tethered to each other, and so football is always her. So, so always, was, if, even if she wasn't dating Spencer, she would been writing and, about football and sports because it would remember be early in the to her. Oh, can I? Yes. Now here's the thing. I before we even get further into this podcast, I need to I need to say this. I need to say this. Liv, as they have mentioned in the show, 
is an investigative journalist. Thank you. She's not a sports journalist. Thank you. Yes. A sports journalist is not sports. what lives. That's She's not, not a sports, a sports journalist. Is focused on stats. A for, sports journalist is focused on following specific teams. Thank you. To mm-hmm. report on their stats, to report on their players, to report on their coaches. That is not what Liv is doing. Right. Liv is an investigative journalist, which is why she can write this NIL article about Wade, and then, which is why she can write this article about the coach, and she can still write an article about unmasking about itself. unmasking yes. <laughs> exactly she can Liv, i just need to reiterate that again she's an investigative journalist she's not going into sports journalism and then I, it's also to note and it, some people also go well why is she writing this if she's not on the school newspaper <laughs> if anybody knows what? anything about college yes that's been on twitter too. <laughs> who said that oh so, it's a couple of people so okay. but so i want y'all to understand this Mm-hmm. National college sports is a national conversation, meaning that every level of journalism, from your college paper to the, the Wall Street Journal at times, because U of M has been in Wall Street Journal, have written about college sports. So it is that big. And so for people to have that small, narrow, like what she can write about and what she should write about is very interesting to me. Just yes. Yeah. But yeah. we diverting to, to the uh yeah to to wrap up this this discussion on fifteen we didn't get very far we did not. <laughs> <laughs> but to wrap up this discussion on fifteen um how they resolve that is it says like uh before they even talk about the mini fight argument that they had in the episode or whatever two I think both of our points Carmen even though we see it in slightly a different way she literally goes to Spencer and she's like number one. Let me congratulate you on winning your game. Rah, rah, rah. Let me congratulate you on making the winning play. Sis Boomba. Sis Boomba, I'm going to be your cheerleader. <laughs> because again, I have also heard that Liv does not support Spencer. Right. And she doesn't apologize oh. first, but keep going. And yes. she, she, she doesn't apologize. Oh. And so she literally said, before we even talk about our fight, bro. I want to celebrate you. <laughs> the trip that you made and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And, and, and then they have this whole conversation. Spencer says, you you know, your perspective doesn't make your thoughts invalid, which kudos to him for saying that. I, yes. this is what I was yes. really wanting him to say. Uh, and then Olivia goes on and says like, you saw parts of the story that I was missing. And that was good. Like, this is the conversation that they're, supposed to have you know when yes. they're they're mm-hmm. both calm and they're both just like okay like we we disagreed but we're actually starting to see that like we, we're starting to see each other's perspective it was like and they reflected I, back over the argument like yeah. yeah alone they reflect back over the argument and see what they said wrong and, and yeah and you you I know what it. i find very interesting this happened after Liv walked away and there was actually them thinking about it instead of them trying to talk about it in the moment. It happens when you can right. re- w- walk away and reflect. Just saying. Right, right. And it was also after the way after Spencer was surprised at seeing Davida and her talking to mm-hmm. uh, Davida. Which I don't understand and why again, that was she a- apologized. She apologized. I think it's important for us to shout out as well. Yes. <laughs> but here's the deal. I found it interesting that Spencer was shocked that Liv would eventually talk to Davida. Because if you don't know anything else about Olivia Baker, she will eventually come around and talk to different people that some people won't even speak to. Yeah, yeah, but I can see a surprise because she was like on a rampage. She was on a rampage. <laughs> and two, how Davida introduced yeah. herself to her. And how Spencer. I still, well, I and I see, I wasn't even going to bring that up, but she yeah, did we're not going to go back. We're not going to go back. We got a lot to do. Uh, yes. This how that all unfolded. Don't say she well, did say Spencer told me about you. That's all she I did. Say. She did. She did. I don't know she how right. I rewatched right. it and didn't hear it still. Yes. Yes, yes she did say that, but <laughs> also to yeah. the introduction of both of them and Spencer. Yeah, it wasn't her bad. It was a bad. Yeah, it was so bad. It was and bad. I think partly. Partly it was because Spencer, and sorry, I am going to lay this a little bit on Spencer. Lay it. Because he didn't let Olivia know that he was going to come to the event. Um, if we can just touch on that super, super quickly. Yeah, he did uh, let her know, I know that he thanked the girl. But go ahead. 
and right he didn't let her know that he thanked the girl and i again i just want to shout out that olivia was literally going to his event in in place of him as a representative of spencer he was not going to go and not only did she go in place of him but she also got the two most closest people in her life next to spencer to go to that layla and jordan layla and jordan and so (laughs) they were all gonna be at that event that spencer was not gonna be at so uh, again i'm just laying down the evidence (laughs) of what olivia has done has done for Spencer, and I, so I do think that he should have sent her a text uh, that he was he was coming, that he changed his mind. Definitely, she was definitely supporting him. Yeah, definitely supporting. Him. Oh, so anyway, so that's that's that that's that. Thanks for listening to Film Study, an All American podcast. Stay tuned for the next part of our series. <laughs>